You didn't expect it to get like this. You were a marine once. One of the Earth's toughest brass, hardened in combat and trained for action. There was no hellhole on Earth where you hadn't been deployed. No nightmare of hailing gunfire and explosions where you hadn't taken a tour. And you always found yourself at the heart of it, fighting and blasting your enemies away, working each day with dreams of retirement, long rest and relaxation with your pet rabbit, Daisy. Until the end of your days. All of that changed three years ago. You were on what you had planned to be your last tour of duty before getting shipped home. Your commanding officer at the time was an asshole, by the book kind of guy, uncompromising and a hard ass, but you never would have suspected that he was a complete psychopath. You had just rescued a group of hostages from an insurgency, but the insurgents were testing some kind of chemical weapon, a virus that they'd engineered, and Sarge was certain that the hostages were his test subjects and that they were infected. It came as a real shock to you and your men when he ordered that you all open fire on the hostages. The people that you had just saved, he was telling you to murder them in cold blood to keep his quarantine, despite the fact that they showed no signs of infection. Some of your men hesitated, but then they began to raise their weapons. But despite how long you'd been in combat, you still had a conscience. Your defiance really pissed your CO off to the point where he was prepared to execute you for your insubordination. That was apparently his last word on the subject. He's currently enjoying retirement in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, enjoying the view of the beach in a body cast, sipping drinks, as well as a majority of his liquefied food and nutrients to keep himself alive through a straw. <laughs> Unfortunately, beating a man to near death especially a superior officer, even if he was out of line, has its consequences. It was a court-martial offense. The prison system in the future had become extremely fucked up. Most prisons across the planets were so overcrowded that the governments effectively stopped caring enough to fund them. Before long, every prison had been run strictly for profit. You were a special case, however, maximum security, but because of your kind of combat training and skills, people weren't comfortable with the idea of a thug like you serving his double life sentence anywhere near them, without believing that you were fully capable of escaping. But then again, there were options beyond just Earth. The space program had finally taken us to Mars, the Red Planet. And over the past few decades that we'd been up there, Mars had been playing host to one of the biggest conglomerates on the Earth, the Union Aerospace Corporation. The UAC was a multi-planetary conglomerate. They were currently paving the way for the colonization of other planets, taking mankind to a solar system level. But like I said, they were a private co corporation, and they were far out of the way of any safe, civilized population. The UIC was so diversified that they often dipped their hands to other businesses, including the prison and the incarceration facilities. Their idea was to take the most dangerous criminals on Earth and take them 50 million miles away, put them so far out of the way and out of mind, no one would miss them. Everybody on Earth seemed to leap at the idea. It was perfect. Isolation, exile from the planet, if you were bad enough. And that is where your story was headed. No maximum security prison on Earth, so UAC snatched up the opportunity to buy your incarceration orders, paying what to you seemed like a lot of money. In a way, UAC literally bought you, and you didn't find out why until you had got to Mars. Being 50 million miles away from any jurisdiction on Earth, there was effectively no laws on Mars outside of what the UAC said and what they were comfortable with doing. You found out that the maximum security prison on Mars was actually a research facility. The prisoners who were brought here effectively had no rights, 
no identities, no future, no contact with the outside world. And in a lot of ways, they weren't even human anymore. At least not to the scientists who now held their lives in their hands. And up here, no one could hear them scream. And here you found yourself, the latest lab rat. You don't know exactly the full details of what went on, but for what you did find out, the UAC had actually conducted archaeological digs on Mars and found the remnants of a long-lost civilization that once populated the planet. They found humanoid skeletal remains. It seems that the Martians were actually pretty close to us Earthlings after all. According to the genetic extractions they performed on the fossils, there was something very subtle different about them. A gene that the Martians had activated that human beings had yet to tap into. And the experiments that you were to partake in were meant to unlock these genes. You don't know exactly what it is they gave you between all the injections and the needle pricks. Whatever strands of DNA that they were shooting you up with meant to activate the supposedly dormant human gene. It went on for weeks, months, and maybe even years. You had no idea. The pain was so unbearable that your mind began to spiral out. Seconds became hours, days became decades. Being injected with that crap felt like hot magma rushing through your veins. You could see among your fellow test subjects that not many were surviving. It scared you. You had no idea how you'd lasted this long, but you kept thinking at any moment this serum was going to kill you, and you'd be thrown into the garbage with the rest of the, the test subjects, because the people here didn't give a damn about your worthless life. You were surprised when one day the pain stopped, and your senses were inexplicably clear. Not just clear, though. Heightened. You felt so much more than what you had been. After months of being strapped to a table, you were finally let up to do some more, less painful tests. The routine physical they ran you through yielded incredible results. You were outmatching your record previously set in the military for strength, speed, agility, and reflexes by nearly 50%. You were stronger. More than that, your senses had been heightened as well. You couldn't fathom it. Why had they given you a serum that made you stronger? As it turns out, this gene that they were experimenting with from the Martian DNA effectively made you superhuman. You were the only test subject that had survived so far. That didn't surprise me why they were testing us on prisoners who couldn't object. The idea of going through that... <laughs> no one would have any idea what, what they'd be getting themselves into. I doubt anyone would volunteer if they did. You were meant to be the progenitor of a new generation of super soldiers that the UAC would sell to the military back on Earth. What surprised you next was even stranger. The last year of your current incarceration, your three-year sentence on Mars, was surprisingly the easiest. From what you were told, over the last four years, the military had been the UAC's biggest supplier, and they were close clients with each other. That's probably how they found out about you and your brutal reputation. And because of this close relationship, the military was stationed on Mars to guard the UAC's facility, and in return, the UAC allowed the military to conduct various secret projects on their moon facilities. It all made sense to you. After all, the people of Earth didn't want their nuclear waste and dangerous prisoners on the planet anymore. Why not test all the top-grade nuclear weapons up here as well? And damn, they had some impressive tech. Weapons the likes of which you'd never seen before. Because of your success as a test subject, they wanted you to test them out. With no action around for 50 million miles, and no real desire to get revenge on your captors without a secure way back to Earth, you decided, fuck it, and 
someone along with your game. You had long since accepted the fact that you were effectively exiled from the Earth. Might as well have a little bit of fun. Not that it convinced anyone on the basis to trust you. Everyone still saw you and regarded you as the volatile maniac who beat a man to near death with his bare hands. Not that you cared what they thought, especially since they were the ones dumb enough to make you into a super soldier. But then, it happened. The military had been conducting several experiments on the two bases, the facilities on Phobos and Deimos. They were cross-examining research on the Martian artifacts recovered from the archaeological digs and found some remnants of strange technology. When you first heard the rumors, you couldn't believe it. They were working on interdimensional space travel, and not only were they knocking on that door, they opened it. The news was incredible. They'd managed to open a gateway between Phobos and Deimos. It usually amounted to throwing one gadget into one side and watching it come out the other, hundreds of thousands of miles away. You could understand the hype. With this kind of technology, space travel was redundant. A person could get from Mars back to Earth with a single footstep over the threshold. But then the rumors surrounding the biological tests for the gateways came in. A few more of your cellmates were taken as military volunteers to partake in the experiments. Fortunately, you were deemed too valuable and were spared for this shit detail. From what you heard, the people who went into the portals usually didn't come back out. They would sometimes completely disappear, and the few who did come back were usually driven completely insane, babbling vulgarities, bludgeoning anything that breathes, and finally, suffering an untimely death from a full-body explosion. You had your quiet reservations about this whole project. The scientists that opened this door clearly had no idea what to expect, what might be waiting for us on the other side. Not that anyone will listen to you, though. The latest military reports stated that the research was suffering from merely a small setback. But for the time being, the gateways have been shut down until they can be determined safe. But for now, everything was under control. At least that's what they reported before it went down. A few hours ago this morning, Mars received a gobbled message from Phobos. Mayday! Mayday! We require immediate military support! The gateways! The gateways have turned themselves back on! And something fucking evil is coming through! The computer systems have gone berserk! We need help! SOS! Reinforcements! God! Oh my god! Oh my god, they're here! Dear god! Help us! The rest was completely incoherent. And soon afterwards, Deimos was bathed in an unnaturally glowing light similar to the gateways itself. And it vanished from the sky. And that got everybody's attention. How in God's name does a moon just disappear from a planet's orbit? Where the hell could something that big go? The scientists on the planet were beginning to deduce that somehow the gateway on Deimos had become so unstable that it grew until it literally engulfed the planet itself. And strangely enough, it didn't come out the other side on Phobos. So where the hell was it now? Since then, attempts to establish contact with either moon have been unsuccessful. You were surprised when a military platoon dressed in security armor and armed to the teeth came by your cell. You thought you were going to be escorted to a secure location, but instead you were surprised to learn that they were actually here for your help. They didn't trust you, but the scientists had figured that since you were the only enhanced soldier with military experience on the planet, you could be a valuable asset in helping fight off whatever was happening down on Phobos. They were considering it a field test, as it were. You were freed from your cell, donned in a bit of Praetor security armor, and told to report with your new squad leaving for Phobos immediately. 
but it was clear your new CEO was still nervous about bringing you along. You and your new friends were the only combat troop for 50 million miles. There was deadly quiet on Furbass when you landed. You were expecting to be given some kind of weapon and told to charge in. Instead, your CEO only handed you a dainty sidearms pistol and you were ordered to secure the perimeter of the base while the rest of the team went inside. Your CEO ordered that once the perimeter was secured, you were to return to the pod and not do anything until further orders were given. He was benching you. With no better options, you obeyed. You cleared the corners surrounding the Phobos hangar and returned to the pod. For several hours, your radio picked up nothing. You were bored out of your mind starting to believe that the distress call was a false alarm, or maybe some asshole was pulling a prank. That is, until the radio erupted with sounds of combat. Guns firing, men yelling orders, screams, bones cracking, and then finally... Dead silence. It seems that your new friends are dead. You didn't like this at all. You were effectively marooned alone on a desolate moon with no way off and no backup support. You'd been out of combat for about three years now, and you might be a little bit rusty. But there was one thing that was clear in your mind. It was now all up to you. Then again, you were now a super soldier. Maybe that would give you an edge. Still, things aren't looking too good never be able to navigate off this planet on your own. Plus, all the heavy weapons have been taken by the rest of your team, leaving you with only the pistol. If only you could get your hands on a plasma rifle, or even a shotgun. Whatever killed your squad deserves a couple of pellets in the forehead. Gulping hard and wiping the sweat from your brow before securing your helmet, you exited the landing pod. Hopefully you can find some more substantial firepower somewhere within the station. As you walk through the main entrance of the base, you see just how wrong you were. The facility staff, from what you can see here, are all dead. Their corpses strewn about the area, lying either dead and rotting, torn up with bleeding claw marks, burned, or even stranger, riddled with bullet holes. It looks like all hell broke loose in this place. And then you hear animated growls echoing throughout the distant corridors. For a moment you worry about just how clearly outnumbered you are here. You ready a pistol and clear the corners to see a man standing there. He looks like a security officer assigned to this place. He's standing there making a strange gurgling sound with his back turned to you. Emerging from your position, you beckon to him, asking if he needs medical attention and hoping to get some answers about what happened here. In a moment, he turns to you, revealing his mouth dripping with blood and filled with sharp fangs, and his eyes are glowing red and wild with madness. He opens his mouth and roars at you. It's an unnatural sound no human being is capable of making. He's aiming his assault rifle your way. Moving quickly, you immediately duck to the side, raising your pistol, shooting at him in the arm, causing it to fall away. The man's flesh was so fragile, it, it was like it was rotting. He roars in pain momentarily towards you again, now completely disregarding his severed limb. You dive forward, grabbing his rifle from his severed arm, before bashing it across his face, knocking him back. You then grab him from behind, and you break his neck dropping his dead corpse to the ground. It's scary. His skin is cold and ragged, like he was decaying. But he was still alive. It was like he was a zombie. Something fucking evil has happened in this place. <coughs> you hear more sounds up ahead. You crack your knuckles, pop your neck, and then raise your newly acquired assault rifle. There's no turning back now. Not like you would if you were given the chance. Something about the scene just draws you in. You can't turn away as if you have an instinctual need to fight. This desire to go straight into it has overcome you. You're wondering if it's a side effect of the serum. 
Looks like you have no choice now but to go through. As you wade knee deep in the dead, cutting your way through the Phobos base, encountering the primal, brutal, evil horrors that await you. You will be worse, and they will come to fear your name. Repent here until it is done.